Hawaii Heartlight. Hawaiian Heartlight. You know, we love to listen to our song that Michelle composed and created for the show. And we kind of sit here and we get ready for the show. And I was thinking, Mama's in the kitchen and you know the kids are around. And I was thinking about the way I used to be in the kitchen, mopping the floor when these shows would come on and taking care of the kids and doing all that good stuff that mothers do and housewives do. I hope you go get yourself a cup of green tea mm -hmm. for your health <laughs> or coffee if you want a little uh -huh. poison to system, you know, in your system <laughs> like I used to get. But they say coffee will ruin your looks, girl, so you gotta be careful we too don't drink coffee. too much coffee. <laughs> you have a little bit of chocolate that's good for you, okay? But anyway, we have a special show for you today. And good morning, Colleen. Good morning, Phyllis. And I would say, Drew, I don't know why I'm so happy, but <laughs> you know, it's got to be Jesus because we have so much tension in getting over the mountain. I got to come over the mountain to get here right on time. And sometimes I have a little accident mm -hmm. in the car before I get up here, like I did. I hit the bus a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> just before I came up here. And uh, that was fun. That cost me a little bit of money to get that fixed. I'm glad he didn't hit you and you hit him. Oh, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I'd be probably down on the ground flat, you know. But the Lord is good. He let me be behind the bus here yeah. on Baratania. You just gave him a little bump, I'm sure. Oh, he didn't even get out. But it sure ruined. <laughs> it's like a mosquito wow. hit the 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 what the back Brewer. fender, yeah, the back. and he didn't even look around, and it just decimated my whole front <laughs> beautiful little car. Good thing Joe didn't see it. I just took it right over mm -hmm. to the repair shop, like a good wife yeah. should, so that the hubby didn't see all the damage I did. <laughs> I, I don't think oh, you're you watching do so anyway. Much for Joe. <laughs> yeah. Joe's a blessed man. Oh, he is yeah, a blessing is. to me. That's Fifty sure years is. we'll be together in June. I don't know why I thought threw that in. Listen, you got a great guest today. Yes, the best. His name is Pastor John DeMillo over from Hana, Maui. And I'm so excited. His whole Ohana is here today. Well, not the whole, but part of his Ohana is here today. His wife, Marianne, and mm -hmm. Pastor Pearl and his daughter, Whitney. But he's here to share his story. And it's a great story, so I hope you stay tuned. But also a convention? Yes, he'll be opening up. Uh, is a great, great conference this weekend, Saturday at the Convention Center. Wow. Don't miss it, 8 to 12, wow. Transformation Hawaii. And uh, it's uh, leaders in the marketplace. Wow. So if you have a heart for the marketplace, you need to be there this Saturday. And John DeMello and his team there from East Side uh, House of Restoration in Maui will be there to open up the whole conference, so don't miss it. Super, and I have Joshua, and I won't even try to say his last name, but he's from Victory Ohana, and you know Gary Shield, Pastor Gary Shields has sent me so many beautiful women and men that have been on given such great testimonies. Yes. This island is not only filled with good entertainers, the best, we don't need to go to the mainland to uh, Import them. <clears throat> American Idol to get any of our guys. Yeah. We have got them over here. Aloha. We have got good entertainers over here. Yes. And I hope to get them all on this show. And we have got good speakers, good testimonies. We don't need to go away for that either. We've got wonderful testimonies. And yeah. beautiful <laughs> dances from my Colleen Namora and beautiful songs from my daughter Michelle when she feels good. Yeah. <laughs> <Those are laughs> and I'd like to, if I have a little soft music, I give you a little word of prophecy that some of you are listening, I found out the other night. This girl says, hey, you were talking right to me when I gave a word from the Lord. Prophecy is a word from the heart of God. It's not from my heart now. It's from the heart of the Lord. And in 1984, the Lord gave me this. And the title of it is in my little book, you know, Tender Moments. The title of it is my spirit washes over your life. My spirit washes over your daily life like a cleansing wave. My spirit is shifting and sifting the sands on your beach continually. See, the Spirit of God is washing over our own personal lives every day. Thank God 
because we get so much debris on there, we really have to have the help of the Holy Spirit clean us up. Yeah. Let my spirit move over your shoreline, beloved, every few minutes. I find I can really sin if I don't watch myself and that the human heart loves to sin. I'm sorry, but we do. What we want to do, we don't do. What we do want to do, we don't. We just human. But if you ask the Lord to forgive you and cleanse your heart, the minute you do it, and Lord, by the way, help me, Holy Spirit, not to do it again. He will strengthen you in your weakness and help you and help me. For God is at work in us, helping us to obey what he asks us to do. Therefore, I can't do it by myself. God is at work in me, helping me. Praise God. Thank God for that. My spirit, the the Lord is saying, my spirit will clear and clean all debris off your beach and you will become like a smooth white beach for others to walk on. Sometimes a large wave will come and sweep off years of debris piled up on your shoreline. Years of hurt and bitterness, getting mad and holding grudges. The Lord wants to sweep your life clean off of off of all that stuff. It's just stuff, debris. And the Lord said, this is good for you when I do this. This is good for you. This is good for me when I get all cleaned up. You don't just get all cleaned up when you're saved. You get all cleaned up every single day. Maybe night, maybe afternoon. <laughs> maybe any time you sin. You ask the Holy Spirit to come in and forgive you. Release yourself to the great and mighty pulling of the tide of my Holy Spirit. Trust me to move over your land gently by my Holy Spirit waves. We deal strong with demons and devils, but we deal gently by the Holy Spirit. He's very gentle. Jesus is a gentle man, though he's very strong, and I love that. And I have a gentle father, too, in heaven, Father God. He's a gentle man, but he's powerful. Be still and rest your heart. As you become quiet, you'll hear my voice, the Lord says, and you'll learn of me. Be still and know that I am God. Hard for prophets to be still. Got big mouths. I'm the mouse of the body, so I'm always wanting to talk, and God is training me how to shut up, I think. I hope. I'm trying to learn to speak less, and the words that I speak mean more. As you become quiet, you'll hear my voice, and you'll learn of me, the Lord says, and I'm removing the litter in your life day by day, wave by wave, a bit at a time. Very soon now, you'll see many treasures from sunken ships lost at sea wash up onto your clean beach. And as the tides of my glorious revival sweep over your shorelines of Hawaii, you'll glean many precious treasures of my heart. These treasures are like beautiful seashells. These seashells are my people in Hawaii and some of tourists. These seashells are my people and you'll pick them up and you'll wash them clean and they shall be treasures, my treasures in my earth. So let my spirit come. Let my waves move in and out daily to renew your land, to keep it clean. Give me a clean heart, Lord. Let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight, Lord, not only your sight, but the sight of God. Last of all, I want to remind you that part of your strength must come from the Lord's mighty power within you. And he gave power to them, you know, who believed and received. To them gave he power to become the sons and daughters of the Lord. So there's power in you, pistol packing power in you from God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we can't be undone with that much power in us. And now, 
I have a lovely dance from my beautiful Colleen Namora. Enjoy. So I can see the world from there I may never ride the waves And taste the salty ocean air Or build a bridge That will last a hundred years But no matter where the road leads One thing is always clear I am blessed. Thank you, Colleen. You know, you are blessed. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. That's a really old Pentecostal song. Count your blessings. See what God has already done. You know, we're not even aware of all the beautiful things that are happening in the island that God is doing. So many wonderful blessings. He's blessing families, blessing churches, blessing people. And we need to bless him because he's blessing others. Give him all that's due to him. Yeah. And good morning, darling. Good this, morning. this is mom and me. This is mom. This is me. That's me. 
And what's on your heart this morning? Anything? Um, I thought that um, prophecy was incredible. Yeah. Yeah, we that, need that washing every day of the Holy Spirit in every way to keep our lives up in shape, you know? I was thinking when I saw the water, you know, going on the, the sands of the beaches when you were talking, I was thinking about the little black pieces of charred wood or wood that's been floating a long time. And I just saw it wash out, you know, how you were saying the debris washes away, sticks. And nobody things. can wash away debris like Jesus. You can ask the President of the United States and he can't do that. And you can ask the mayor and the mayor of the island can't do that. And you know, not even our pastors or prophets or teachers or evangelists can wash away your sin. What can wash away my sin? Nothing, Nothing but, but the, the blood, blood of Jesus. Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing, Nothing but, but the, the blood, blood of Jesus. Jesus. That's oh, precious is the blood. You know, a lot of people who don't know what the blood of Jesus represents, it's the life. That was his life-giving blood that poured out. And when you have him come into your heart, he gives you life, new life, new life, new blood, new everything. You're a new person, Michelle. But I think it has to be renewed every day. I think we have to, it says working, walking your salvation out. Sometimes it happens all of a sudden you're rid of an addiction, but then other times it takes weeks and maybe months, but you still praise God, you know, because you still got the cigarette and you still got the habit, uh, and we all have the uh, habit, yeah? We have these habits, and mine may not show, <coughs> thank God, mine may not show like someone who's got, you know, a cigarette in their mouth, but a habit of lying is just as bad I mean, it, it, it's just as bad in your mouth to lie, and it can cause a lot more destruction. Cigarettes kill your body, but lying kills the soul and the spirit. You know, I still worry about these kids on, I watched no, American, American Idol, Idol. yeah, she and I still worry, show. of course, we've got one girl that's over there now, too. And I, I still think they're dream killers. They get yeah. they're yeah. all, you know, dreams, all their hopes up. Okay, you're good, and now you're good, and now you're good, and now you're bad, and you're off. <laughs> and the Lord doesn't do that. He doesn't bring you up from glory to glory to say to you, now you're bad, and you're off the show, and you're out. And I wonder how these kids can handle it without God, without Christ, because the disappointment is so great. They get them up on this peak a performance and they're at the very peak and then they say well you know you didn't you know, Simon Legree says you know you didn't work uh, to your peak but they did they were really at their peak and they thought I'm doing the best I know how and then they say no you're not but the Lord always understands that you are doing the best that you know how with his help mm -hmm. we can make it yeah yeah so Shelley what's your song for today darling because we got two good interviews Save, delivered and healed are you saved? Yes. Delivered? Yes. And healed? Of course. Go sing it. <laughs> I like this song because it's very powerful. And you've got to get more than saved. You've got to get healed and you've got to get delivered and a few other things, you know. We all do. So this is Michelle, my daughter. Saved, healed, and delivered.
Michelle. Oh, I just sing that with her. I know that song so well. I'm saved. Thank God. I'm healed. Thank God. And I'm delivered. If we could just keep that positive word always in our mouths. I'm saved. When the enemy comes and says, hey, you're lost. You're lost. You say, no, I'm saved. And when the enemy comes and says, hey, you got lots of bad spirits. And you say, no, I've been delivered. And then when the enemy comes and says, hey, you got bad stuff going in your body. I mean, some really bad diseases happening. And you say, no, I'm healed by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord says he will return our health. He'll bring us back into good health and he will heal <coughs> our wounds. That's in Jeremiah 37. You just keep looking over there in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll find it there. Okay. Saved, healed, and delivered. And you know, Victory, Ohana knows all about that. And they keep sending me saved, healed, and delivered mm -hmm. people. And I want to say welcome. Good morning. How morning. do you say your it's, last name, Joshua? It's, it's Duvachel. And by the way, it's French. And don't ask me to speak French. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Duvachel sounds like seashells, like my pretty prophecy today. Yes. Young man, you look like you've never had a problem in your life. You look fresh and you got no wrinkles and you look young and uh, yeah. you don't look like probably the life that you're gonna talk about that you've been through. 
Were you raised in a Christian family, Joshua? Yes, yes I was. I had a, a dad who was a pastor. I was raised in a Christian home. Um, it just so happened that uh, during my younger days, none of the, the Christian, uh, the Bible, the Word, never influenced me and never touched my heart at the time. Do you think maybe, Jonathan, a lot of pastor kids pastor's kids are that way. I think so. That they get so much. I know in Pentecost that's what happened with us. We got so much Pentecostal stuff, rules and regulations and do's and don'ts that we just, you know, didn't do any of it. Yep. In a way. You're kind of forced to go. You're kind of, you know, bred into it, but you don't experience it a lot of times uh, like your parents would want you to. Yeah. And um, th that, was, that was my case. Uh, and I'm a product of Victor Ohana. I, I went through the program uh, at a young age, and I actually came out of the Hawaii Youth Correctional Facility. And uh, it was so, so awesome that the Lord allowed me to go to Victor Ohana. Um, I, I, I went to the correctional facility at age uh, 15. Wow. And um, I went down that wrong path as a youth. And um, I experienced the whole juvenile system, institutions, um, foster homes. Uh, I was an orphan at one time in Hilo. Um, I just chose a lot of the bad influences in my life. You know, I have had a son-in-law that was in foster homes all of his life, and he never got over the scars of it. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can get over that being left and not reje uh, rejected and not wanted right. is through the Lord. Yeah. He's the only one that Amen. can heal those scars. Only the Lord. Amen. That's a horrible thing for a child to feel mm -hmm. that I'm not wanted. Mm -hmm. And what did you do though in those years and did that make you turn to other things? Well I like what you shared earlier about this passage about how you need to be free, how the Lord wants to clean your heart out to fill his spirit in you and that's what the Lord told me a number of years ago um, uh, before I, I came to Victor Rohan, I had a, a curiosity about God and he began to stir something in me while I was in the youth corrections and when I came to Victor Rohan, I had all these group of men big strong men from prison and, and, and with the battle scars gang leaders and, and ex-pimps and drug dealers you know them and uh, some they, of them, I know some of the ex ones. Right. <laughs> and they, what was different about them though is that they they had a a new drive, a new desire for the Lord, and the old influences that tried to get me in the world uh, were in them. But now they were trying to change it, and they began to influence me now. And every Friday nights we had Bible study at at the program. And I remember seeing all these big, tough, strong guys with tattoos from the face down, just lifting up their hands and praising God. And, and my heart began to open up to them, knowing that they came from a rugged background. And the Lord began to speak to me at a young age, and He began to, to tell me that um, I want to change you. I want to clean your heart. I want you to be free, like my word says. And at that time, I still didn't realize it because I still had issues and just like you all know we have issues we want to do what is right but at the same time we we still have those things that we're dealing with our smoking habit like you just said other things and, and that's how uh, that's how I was and I hope I have some time to share my testimony I'll get it out as soon as I can <laughs> but um, at the time I of we were already into it <laughs> right yeah well, well what's going on start <laughs> you know it, it was it, it's it's so awesome because yes. here I am in, I'm in the program I'm getting blessed I'm I started work I find a job I find a girlfriend now I start planning myself and I'm 17 years old and I come to this program and it's all new to me I don't know how to get an account together I learned to get a bank account going. I learned how to work a job eight, eight to four. I have, I have a girlfriend now, and, and all of a sudden, I'm starting to plan now. I'm going to church. I'm reading the Bible. I'm praying, and I'm being blessed. And then all of a sudden, as everything starts to fall in place and work out, I start to fade away a little. Fade away. You know how that works. We, 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 we get what we want, and then we kind of fade away. We say, okay, we don't need the Lord anymore. And that's kind of what happened with me. And... And as I faded away, I, 
I remember I, was, I went on this one trip, and uh, my girlfriend was living on the Big Island at the time, so we used to travel back and forth. And, and I remember on the plane, I told the Lord this. I actually prayed this to God. I said, Lord, I said, um, forgive me for what I'm about to do. I said, I know you've blessed me, and I've been blessed, and I've been working. You had, gave all this to me. And I said, but I know what I'm going to do. And I go back to the Big Island, the same old friends, the same old environment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to party. I'm going to go back to some of my old ways. I flew back to Hilo, and that whole week, just party, party, party. I went back to my old ways. I totally forgot about what God did in my life, what he blessed me and how he prospered me so quickly. And uh, I remember when I came back from Hilo, I, I was supposed to be there for only nine days. I stayed for 10 days, and I came back on Monday. And first thing I did was I called my boss. He was actually an uncle of mine, uh, like a second relative. And I said, oh, Uncle Dave, I said, I'm back. I'm ready to work. I said, can I come back to work today? It was a Tuesday. And he was like, Josh, where were you? Where were you? I was looking for you. Oh, man, I was calling you. I said, we got these contracts. It was a temporary service. And uh, I said, you know, you have to show up on time. And I said, yeah, Uncle, I'm back. I'm sorry. You know, my girlfriend convinced me to stay one more day. And he said, you know, Josh, I'm going to have to let you go. He said, you know, um, we, have, we have obligations, and I can't have you doing this. And I was devastated. I, I, I said, okay, I can deal with this. <clears throat> and just the next day, I started looking for a job. My uh, social worker calls me. Uh, she comes and sees me. She used to visit me every now and then at the house. And uh, she, we're talking outside, and she's looking around. And I had two Cadillac DeVilles, 77 DeVilles. I had plans, and I was going to do all these things with them, you know, low ride them, put some rims. And she looks and she, you know, Josh, you know you're supposed to not have any vehicle? You can't be driving, Josh. You're on parole. And I'm like, oh, shucks. You got your license? Yeah, I do. You're going to have to give me your license. We're going to have to get rid of these cars. <gasps> not only did I have to get rid of my cars, but I had to submit my license. I had to go back into the youth corrections for a night, cooling off period, they call it. <coughs> and, and I was like, oh, I don't believe this is happening. So here I am, I'm sitting in this cell. I cooled off, they let me out. I'm thinking, okay, I got my job is gone, my cars are gone. Um, I call up my girlfriend, this is on a, a, a Thursday. We get into it, and here I am, we get into a big argument. And whatever happens, we end up breaking up. That day, after over a year and some months, we call it off. We say, okay, you know what? It's over. We get into this huge argument. Friday night comes, and here I am. I'm sitting in a Bible study that I was telling you about, the weekly Bible study. And um, I'm just devastated. I'm heartbroken. I'm sitting in this living room. You have 25, 30 ex-cons just sharing their hearts. And here I am. I'm just devastated. My heart is broken. I have nothing to live for. And, and I just feel, uh, you know, I had thoughts in my mind about suicide. I had, you know, I felt like I had nothing to live for. Everything that God gave me, he took away. And I said, okay. And it comes to my turn, and it's time for me to share my testimony or what God is doing in my life. Uh -huh. And here I am, 17 years old, and I said, you know what? I have nothing to say. And, and, and there, you know, it moves on to the next guy. And the next guy stands up, big Samoan guy. I remember he... He shared, um, he said, you know, Gary, and Gary was preaching at the time. He said, I have nothing to share to. He said, I just had a bad week. I have to go to court, get my kids. I can't find a job, uh, this and that. And, and he said, I have nothing to share. And, you know, he sat down, and Gary stood up in, in his charismatic, charismatic uh, self, and he said, oh, boy, oh, boy. Look like we got something going on right here. He said, he said, you know, you guys think that you're at the worst place that you can be right now where you're at. But he said, you know, Joshua, you don't realize that you're at the best place that you can be. And I looked at him, and I was curious. I was like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know what I just went through. And he said, you know why I say that, Josh? He said, because 
Sometimes God has to take you yeah. to rock bottom. Talk right into the camera there. Sometimes God has to take you to rock bottom. This is what he told me. And sometimes that's the best place you can be because there's no more bottom that you can go. You hit bottom. And the only place that you can look is up. And he said, as soon as he said those words, it was like the word just pierced, pierced my heart. It pierced me. It pierced me right deep and down. And, and the word that it says that his word uh, pierces to dividing soul and sunder. And that's what it did. And I stood up that day. And I walked to my room down the hallway. And, and, I, and I cried. And I cried and I cried. And uh, it was like, it was like I couldn't control myself. And, and I said two things to the Lord. I said, forgive me. And you know, it was like as soon as I said that, this heavy burden, the suicide thoughts, everything, my job loss, my girlfriend loss, car loss, everything just lifted off. And the peace of God came upon me and like I never experienced before. And uh, the word that the Lord gave me that day was, was um, the greatest work and the greatest change that I want to do in your life doesn't occur on the outside. It happens on the inside. And from that day, I knew that God's plan for me was to be free. And he set me free, not from uh, the drugs, from the gangs, from all those stuff, but the reasons why I did those things, the reasons why I got involved with gangs and drugs. And he set my heart free, and he filled my cup with a with a, a fresh anointing, a fresh spirit that's now alive, just like what you shared, and I was so blessed and touched by that, by that word and by the dance and by your song. Especially by the song. Yes. Sorry. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so real. Just teasing you. You're saying that Jesus Christ is real. Amen. <laughs> 100%. 100%. And all you have to do is say, forgive me. Forgive me. It doesn't have to be a lot of rules and regulations it, or don't do this, don't do that. It's just, here I am, Lord. Take me as I am. Yes. Forgive me. And he did. And so what are you doing now? Today, I'm uh, actually back where I started. I'm with the Hawaii Youth Correctional Facility. Oh. And I'm a youth correctional officer. God has blessed me with this job mightily. Uh, if, if I have another hour, I'll share it, but I know I don't. <laughs> It's a whole new work. I see it from two different sides. And um, it, it's just a lot of work, and I'm blessed. But you can understand those people you're with now. Yes. Like nobody else. You've got yeah. the heart. Thank you, Joshua. What yeah. a wow. glorious testimony to the power of God. And now we have another Pastor John DeMello with Mike Colleen. Hi, Pastor John, Pastor my friend Mike. John. What a testimony that was. Oh, that was exciting, tremendous. So beautiful to hear your testimony, Joshua. Live on for Jesus. Yes. And, and I'm just thrilled that you're there with, with all those boys at the Youth Correctional Facility. My heart goes out to you and all of Thank them. You. Aloha. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Honolulu. John, Thank you. Pastor John DeMello is from Hanamaui. And I think, where's our camera? Over here, over there. Hi. <laughs> so um, we've known each other for a long time, John, through uh, First Rose of Sharon, where the yes. Lord really um, raised you up as a man of God, a man of his family. And now you're over there in Hanamaui as a pastor there, doing great and marvelous things for the Lord God. I've heard testimony upon testimony, and I'm thrilled with what God's doing over there. John, I want to hear a little bit about your BC days, before uh -huh. you knew Christ, and what God has done. We're going to take a little tour here of your life. Okay. Well, um, actually, uh, my life is... Uh, started out as a Christian in, in when I was 14 in ninth grade and I gave my life to the Lord and and I walked in high school as a freshman uh, serious about the Lord and um, after a year I guess I couldn't take the peer pressure and, and I backslid and um, I went through a time of, of being a backslidden Christian and um, ducking and hiding and 
bobbing and weaving, <laughs> thinking that you're fooling God. But um, yeah. I, I was mistaken then. But I, during that period, I, I actually was, was searching for a cultural identity because I'm Native Hawaiian. And, and uh, there was that part of me that, that didn't understand that uh, being a Christian would also allow me to be a Hawaiian as well. And, um, and, and I went through a period where I went and moved in the Valley of Molokai in Pelekunu and I, and I went back to my roots and, and did the taro and the hunting and, and that kind of thing. But I had left Christianity to find my identity. And, um, and so it wasn't until 1989 that a course of events came where I came back to the Lord. And again, there was still that confusion there, yeah, about being Hawaiian and being Christian. And, uh, and I, I, I was raised up in Rosa Sharon under Pastor Les Brown. Yes. And, and God just began a wonderful journey there, you know, as Christian. I remember seeing John. I'd go there to dance. They'd call me over to Maui to dance. And I would see John in the front of the church dancing like a madman. <laughs> and that's what I want to see <laughs> so much. I so desire to see that David spirit dancing before the ark that was brought home with his whole heart and his whole might. And when I saw you dance, that just brought so much encouragement and life to me. So I, whenever I think of, of John DeMello, not Pastor John, just John DeMello, and, and the first meetings that we had was your dancing at, at the front of the church with your whole heart. God must have really done a work for you to dance so hard. <laughs> He did. He set me free. I mean, I understood and was so grateful because in those backslidden years, I ended up um, on the streets of Waikiki and, and doing heroin and all that. And so when I came back in 1989, I was free from all of that. And all of those chains fell away. And because of that freedom, um, there was no containing it. There was no holding back. And, and so, you know, when that music would kick in and the, the praise would, I mean, there was no way that my body could be chained down and uh, and so there was that freedom and and you know there was something in me though that that was still incomplete and when you came okay and, and let me talk about this a bit because it launched in me a, a different uh, aspect of dancing because uh, you came to the church and I think it was around 1990 and you did a song called go and and when I saw you dance in in your art form um, I was weeping on the front and I said to my wife, Pastor Marianne, uh, we're Marianne at that time, and, and I said, honey, we need to do this. And she was crying too, and, and um, my daughter uh, picked up on it. We, we all worship, you know, with sign and expressive worship, but she picked up on it, and she's uh, just she, mentored under you. <laughs> she is an anointed, anointed, anointed dancer, and it, it, I'm thrilled when I'm dancing with her. It's very exciting. She's but... Um, you have um, moved from Rose of Sharon. Mm -hmm. I remember you up at Camp Maluhio. Yes. And yes. then what happened? What drew you to Kenai and Hana? Uh, while I was at Rose of Sharon, uh, there were two precious ladies uh, in the faith from Alaska. They were missionaries, women dear to the heart of God. And they had introduced me to a, to a woman from KNI who's now our associate kahu. Um, her name is Pro Pahukoa. And she's from KNI, born and raised um, in, in the old way, taro patches and in and, and, and every way. And in that introduction that these two ladies uh, who I call the elders of our church. They've gone home to be with the Lord, but they're our original elders. Um, in that introduction, there was an instant uh, bonding of our hearts between uh, uh, Kahu Pearl and, and my wife, uh, yes. Pastor Marion, and myself. And uh, in the course of 10 years, we we were in a waiting period for God. Mm -hmm. uh, she was waiting for us to come out and help her in ministry, and we were being trained at that time. I, I realized that we were in training, uh, and then we mm -hmm. eventually uh, went out and were sent out into Kenai, and, and uh, since then she has you know, opened the gates in the community. In a small community, things are uh, many times closed if mm -hmm. you're not from there. Mm -hmm. So she became a gateway for mm -hmm. us to bring uh, the gospel in, in a different, fresh way, I believe. Praise God. 
I remember you telling me about the two women from Alaska, mm-hmm. and they were much older. Yes, uh, it was uh, Wanda Vogel and Ella Mae Lowry. Um, they, they were sent by God. God called them out of the snow in Alaska, said move to Maui. They looked on the map, found out where Maui was, flew into Maui, seriously. They, they were missionary intercessors. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are. God yeah. can use you so mightily, you know, mm-hmm. and to just have the faith and step out. Oh, that when I heard about the two of them, th- that just really blessed my heart that they would be so obedient to leave their home yes. and go to somewhere that they've never been before in in Kenai, Kenai. in the backside of Haleakala mm-hmm. to serve God and to pray yes. for what you're doing right now. What we're doing. We're walking into some of their labor. See, mm-hmm. they, they prayed. I mean, they fasted. They they led uh, uh, Kahu Pearl to the Lord. And then in her born-again experience, uh, you know, there was introductions made. And then I believe it was in the year 2000, we moved out there in Kenai. And, and God sent me into the taro patch. And because God wanted to teach me from the ground level, from root level, uh, what it means to be Hawaiian and what it means to be a Christian. And then the parable of the sower came alive in the tarot patch for us. And so yeah. when I minister the word to what is predominantly a native Hawaiian community, we, yes. we got about 78% Hawaiians in our communities, Kenai and Hana. Beautiful. I needed to distribute the gospel in a way that the people could identify. Absolutely. So rather than talk about wheat, we use taro. And, yes. and you know, it, it's opened up a world uh, that, that is taking us to where we're headed now here with Transformation Hawaii. Yes, and and. Um, recently, I saw you at a praise um, symposium. Mm-hmm. Um, it was out outdoors, held outdoors, and your whole church, it looked like your whole church, but led by the men. The men were in the front row mm-hmm. doing the oli and um, kahiko and the women dancing also and the youth. I was so blessed at the power and the glory that was revealed that day through your... Um, Ohana, there at Eastside House of Restoration in Hana. Can you tell us about uh, all of the arts and how that has um, evolved? Um, it's necessary, as I said, for art form uh, to be, it's already in the indigenous people, you know, uh, yes. to express themselves in dance and singing. And, and so um, that's part of the way the gospel is, is conveyed through yes. worship and dance. Well, of course, hula being our native uh, dance form. Um, when God brought two precious young people into a congregation, they laid uh, their former ministry, I guess you would say, in the world. They were kumuhulas in their own right. Uh-huh. But they too had a question about being Hawaiian and Christian, and so they laid it down. And then they came to me and they asked me, Pastor, we have to lay this down. And, and I appreciated what they were doing. And I said, God honors your sacrifice knowing that was your first love. But now he's replaced that. I said, but there may be a point in time that he may require you to pick it up again. But let God be the judge of that. And um, they came to me six months later. And, and I had given a prophetic word about uh, uh, Psalms 24, about opening up the ancient gates and, and, and uh, letting the king of glory in. And they yes. showed up at my doorstep and they said, uh, Pastor, we uh, were in prayer and God had given us the oli to this. And... and they just did it and I wept. I, I sat on my f- front porch and I just wept because I heard the prophetic voice of God coming through a native tongue, our native tongue. Yes, you know? how beautiful. And it just moved me and then one thing led to another. And we have a halal now. So. Yes, and you're going to be there at the convention yeah. center yes. this Saturday yes, um, to open. Yeah. And uh, you're going to open with, with the Oli and... Um, We've never had anyone come here to Oli. And I would love for you to do that for us. I'd, I'd love to do that. Um, so take your liberties. Okay. Um, I, I think I'm going to have to stand up okay, for this. Okay, go right okay. ahead, my brother. Okay. Um, Psalms 24 basically says, Open up ye ancient gates. Open up ye ancient doors and let the King of glory enter. The question follows, who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, He is. 
Now, in our native Hemolele or Hawaiian Bible, right, translated in Hawaiian, it would simply go like this. Oya a e komono ho i ke ali inani o vaila ya ali inani o yehova sabota o ya ke ali inani amen I thank the Lord for your obedience, and I know that God is using your church mightily in the community there with even the schools and the kupunas of that land. You're reaching out and being a part of, of politics, of community uh, education, as well as the Hawaiian um, souls there. So I wish you nothing but the best and look forward to hearing all those incredible testimonies out Thank of you. Hana. Now, is there anything else that you'd like to leave us with um, yes, in I your heart? I would, uh, to many of our people of Hawaiian ancestry that uh, have found themselves in that quandary of wondering whether they can be Hawaiian and Christian, the answer is yes. That out of our ethnic, ethnicity, ethnicity we can be Hawaiian and, and I just want to thank all of the people who actually make up our church it's not just the pastor but it's the people that lay down their lives for God and for the gospel and, and I just want to thank each and every one that supports the ministry yeah, out in Hana thank you yes. Colleen I appreciate it good to have you here in thank Honolulu you. God bless you, you. Uh, this um, Saturday and I'll be there to praise God with you all thank you thank you I want to bless the Hawaiian people. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes here in the island. You don't know how beautiful you are. God is in love with these islands. He wants to love on you and pour out his love into all the beautiful expressions of dance and singing. You know, I remember all the old singers that sang so beautifully. Al Apaka, what, what was his name? Alfred Apaka. Alfred Apaka. And all the old singers and their melodies and their hearts. We don't want to forget all the beautiful melodies that Hawaii has given to the mainland. We have brought, brought great beauty to our whole nation. And we will continue to bring beauty of the Hawaiian Islands and the Hawaiian people to all the nation and to you. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you, Michelle, for your song. Thank you, Joshua. You fit the battle of Jericho. Thank you, Colleen Namora. Thank, Thank you, you, you uh, Pastor. I almost said doctor, so you must going to be Dr. John DeMello. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Hawaii, for coming. And the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you that heart light. The heart light. The heart light, the secret is, is Christ in us, the hope of his glory, not ours, the hope of his glory. May the Lord keep you and may your beach be clean today because you asked Jesus to forgive you all of your sins and he came in your heart and cleans you up good. Bye-bye now. God bless you.